Welcome to today's 3D print. Um, stay tuned for three prints that I found and printed on three different printers. And sorry for being late. Um, we've been pretty busy trying to pack up here. And um, stay tuned. Of course I have this shadow right here from the printer. <laughs> um, first up is Mortal Kombat Wall Decor. This is by Basna, B-A-S-S-N-A, -S -S on Thingiverse. It is, uh, what is that number? 892821 on Thingiverse. Link will be down below. This is the Mortal Kombat Wall Decor emblem. This came out spectacular. Actually, that color looks pretty close to spot on. That's not bad. A little yellower. No, that's right about right there. This is printed on the Sapphire S from Two Trees and is printed in Atomic Filament's new Sunset Silk. Gorgeous filament. Really like the color. I did this at uh, 0 0.08 layer height and I also beefed up the Z axis. I distorted this and increased the Z height so that I'd have more um, steps to make nice smooth layers and the result is awesome. So, when I get to wherever I'm going, I'm going to hang that up on the wall. I think that would look pretty cool. I like it a lot. It's stuck very nicely to the Sapphire S bed. Of course, it's not glass, so it's a matte finish. That's the result you get on the shiny side. I would like to clean up this part of it a little bit. The Mortal Kombat logo is beautiful, but this part's a little rough, so I'd like to clean that up a little bit. But beyond that, I'm very happy with that. I like that a lot. If you know of any other nostalgic logos like this, you know, nice things that look nice hanging up on a wall, and I'm probably going to print this bigger. Um, you know, 500 millimeters, I think that would look nice. Uh, let me know. Send me some feedback on logos that you think would look nice. Stuff like this. Stuff that will look nice as decor in a house. You know, not stuff that's just cutesy or anything, but, you know, stuff that will actually look nice. Um, next up is from Mech G on Thingiverse. So let me bring up that one. This is the Cosmostrator from the first spaceship on Venus. Very corny you know, cheesy, B-rated, C-rated sci-fi movie, but I liked it, and the ship is stunning. I love the ship. This is thing number 3342272 on Thingiverse. Link will be down below. And this is an interesting one. This was printed on my Flashforge Guider 2, a printer that continues to truly astonish me. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a shockingly good printer, although I think a lot of that is due to the fact that it's enclosed, because this including these overhangs and bridges. There was support built into the model here in the center and here underneath each of these pylons. I printed this as a separate piece which allowed me to make it larger and also I plan to make this fly eventually. Uh, this is ABS. Really? Yeah, this is ABS. <laughs> to think ABS could print that nicely. I'm impressed. I mean, that's a gorgeous print. And no support. The only support was the built-in support for these columns in the center here. Otherwise, this was free printed. Not freaking bad. That is a gorgeous print. This is a print you can leave in the car and it won't distort because it's ABS. So it's got a high enough glass transition temperature that it won't get wrecked. Um, he is modifying the model a little bit for me to make this section longer, just by a little bit, so that I can increase the chance of making this stable, because right now, the balance point for this model is back here at the engine, and that's before I've added a motor. Now, the good news is the motor is going to be up here, well in front of all this. In the movie, the motors are in here, the thrusters are in these pods on the outside, but as a model rocket, that would be pretty tricky to do. I do know how I can do it. I could have a eye hook each side of each motor pod and have a small string, like dental floss, tied onto the eye hook, passing through the second eye hook, 
tied down to the launch pad. So the motor has to actually light and burn the string in order to release, and it has to burn and release all three to release the model from the pad to permit it to take off. Otherwise, it'll just sit there on the pad and burn two of the motors, which is what you want. Because if it takes off with one motor not lit, <laughs> that's, that's what we call land shark. <laughs> yeah, that's going to that's gonna come after somebody. Do you want that coming after you at 150 miles an hour? I don't think so. So that would keep it from doing that. But to keep it simpler, I'm just going to put a motor in the center. So, you know, a D12 will lift that no problem. So there might actually not be too much of a CG issue. Normally, a CG up here would be really bad. But... See so how much of the thin area is actually behind this point because this point is raised up on the model. And here's the back of the model. That might actually work. That might actually be pretty neat. Um, I would like to scale it up a little more because I'd like a large parachute in here to increase the chance of it surviving landing. Um, something else I was thinking about was um, printing the bottom of these. Starting the print in like a a really flexible TPU kind of material and then switching over to ABS I'm not entirely sure if that'll work especially since the base of the model will be flexible and that might make it hard to get a clean print but that would give me that shock absorption I need to survive landing maybe you won't need it I don't know we'll see but I would like to try to make this fly because I love this model of course I have to paint it silver <laughs> And last up is a model printed on this printer, the Order 4. Let me bring that up. This is the jewelry box with dividers by the great Mr. Bill on Thingiverse 3304456. And that is this. If you were at Murph, you got to see this. This came out really nice. And of course really big. <laughs> yeah, you can see the air the parts fit nicely together that when I do this, this will actually pop out <laughs> I thought that was neat I didn't glue these in yet because I still want to clean these up a little bit more but the inserts are printed in um, proto pasta, imperfect pasta it looks like candy apple red and the unit itself is printed in atomic filaments um, what do they call it? rose transparent glitter so it's a, it's a rose transparent gold, it's got like a, a glitter in the transparent rose colored filament and of course this opens up and you have a big heart container here so you can put stuff in there and everything fits together perfectly it's a very beautiful print he did a good job designing this. The one he did for his picture, I'm assuming it's the one he printed, he did it in wood and stained it. Now I really want to do a wood stained one because it looked really nice in the wood stained color. But I also wanted to do this pink one, I think. When I do a print, it's sometimes hard because the the plastic and the model have to speak to me. It has to there has to be a a click um, where I go that model that color perfect it works and that's what happened with this I was figuring out what do I print with the sunset orange silk and then I saw this Mortal Kombat logo and I was like perfect that would look really good this would also look good in a, a red as well um, the, this model didn't matter I just used any a the ABS that I had because that, it would be painted of course Although if I could find a silver ABS, no painting. <laughs> um, but this one, these two colors spoke to me. It's, when I saw this model and I had these rolls of filament on my mind, it hit me that they jive. It worked. And I agree. I, I like the way it came out. So sometimes it's hard for me to use a new filament until I find the model that works with the filament. Having that problem now, I got that new... Um, multicolor sparkle filament. It's the darker colors that have glitter in it, but it's the color changing, like the Splendid from 3D Plus. I haven't found the model that clicks yet. 
You know, plus, I don't know how the transitions work. I don't know how smooth the transitions are. If they're harsh transition that changes things, if it's smooth transition that changes things. So I got to figure out what model I haven't. I haven't found a model that clicks yet. A model that makes me go, perfect. That's the model for that filament, like this did. This said, that's the model for that filament. So I'm still working on that. Uh, that's it for now. I will see you guys with the Easy Thread on Wednesday stream. Um, don't forget the GoFundMe for the bus down below. I appreciate any support I get. For those who hung around to the end, I have an idea. I don't know if it's a waste of time or maybe I don't know, maybe it's silly, but I have an idea to um, encourage people to donate to the GoFundMe, but to give you something in return. I have a lot of junk. Um, now it's not garbage, it's not trash. It's just. I have to pick and choose what I bring with me. I have 40 years worth of stuff here. <laughs> so I can't bring everything with me. I just can't. I, I, I can fit. Whatever fits in that 20 foot trailer and that 40 foot bus is all I can bring with me. That's it. And my 3D printing and my rockets and my household materials come first. And my sister's materials. Um, although she's not, she doesn't have much. I'll let her bring whatever she wants. I'll even if I have to leave something behind because she doesn't have much. But, um,. I have a lot of stuff that I'm just not going to bring with me. I, I mean, a lot of Star Trek memorabilia. You know, I realize and if I'm lucky, if I get rid of this weight, and if everything goes really, really well, in 20 or 30 years I'll be dead. So what's the point of keeping all this stuff that I'm really just not going to do a whole lot with? If it's, you know, it's, it's sat in that basement, in that garage, in that storage trailer for the last... 15, 20 years, it's just going to sit for another 15 or 20 years, no matter how cool it is, no matter how neat it is. Um, for example, I got, um, what do I got here? Um, uh, man, I got a whole bunch of these old Star Trek, you know, first edition comics and stuff like that. You know, they're not, not worth anything really, but I got a lot of them. So, you know, that kind of stuff. I got a whole bunch of calculators. I got a whole bunch of Star Trek trinkets. I got, like, the, the laser, the Klingon Star Trek phaser laser tag kit. You know, it's like it's like two, um, you know, Nintendo Blaster kind of guns so that look like the phasers. And then you you wear, you have targets. It's a Klingon starship on a piece of plastic with a reflector. And when the light hits the reflector, you, you know, you got to hit. And um, honor system kind of thing. I have that set. I have an old Picard masterpiece figure. I have um, all kinds of Star Trek memorabilia that I really don't need. I like it. I want it, but I don't need it. And I got um, Magic the Gathering cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Star Trek cards and all kinds of old stuff like that. So I was wondering, what if I did something like you know, if you I'll put up like pictures of lots. And if you donate 150 bucks to the um, to GoFundMe, you can pick something, you know, or whatever you guys think, whatever price you think is fair, you know, because it's probably going to cost between 20 and 40 bucks shipping, depending on how big the lot is. You know, figure two um, flat rate boxes. That's going to be you know 15, 16 bucks each for the big flat rate boxes. Let me know what you think of that. Is that a good idea? Is that even worth my time to do? The last thing I want to do is dump 12, 15 hours into setting something like that up to have, you know, one person do it. <laughs> I can do better things with my time. Um, but let me know. Maybe books. I have all kinds of Star Trek and sci-fi books. I'm, I'm about to throw them all away. But media mail is cheap. I can fill an entire box with books and make that one of the things that people can bid on, so to speak. Let me know what you think of that. If you think that's a good idea. And I will see you guys on Wednesday's live stream.